Hey everybody, this is Burke, and I just got done going through this awesome native script tutorial called Native Script Beers, which I highly recommend that you do as well. And I'll put the link to that in the uh, in the notes here below the video. Um, but when you get done building this Native Script Beers tutorial, I'll watch you through, and you consume some data and a list view. It's really cool stuff here. Great tutorial. But I noticed that when I got to the end and I had completed it, there wasn't much styling. So this is what it looks like on Android. And for me, on um, this is what it looks like in iOS. Um, so this is just a plain Jane uh, native style that Native Script gives you, which is kind of grody. It's not doesn't look very good. The cool thing is it's really easy to style Native Script app. So I thought we'd take this awesome app from this amazing tutorial that you should definitely do and style it a little bit, make it prettier. So let's do that. Let's jump back over to the code and take a look at what we got, what we can do to style this thing. So, firstly, let's handle this action bar up here. I'm gonna go to the app.css file. Remember, this is where all our CSS goes, and there's one style from the tutorial. I'm gonna take that out, um, and then we'll just start fresh here. Now, I want to start by changing the background color of the action bar, so let's do that. Uh, I'm just gonna say action bar, and when I do this, this selects every action bar uh, in the application. It's just like CSS and HTML. If you select a div in HTML and you style it, what happens? Right, every div in the app gets that style. So it's exactly the same thing here. Um, and we just want to change the background color. And we'll set it to, um, we can set it to anything. So uh, we can set it to one of these. I can do, um, let's just do a, a hex value 336699, which is a blue. And we'll save this. And then this will set the uh, background color of the action bar to this blue color. So let me show you what that looks like. You can see that here. So we've changed the background color. Um, and if you want some color um, hints and suggestions, there's a really cool Twitter account called, let me show you, Every Color that you can follow. It's literally called Every Color Bot is the name of it. So you can go through here and find some really cool colors. So here's one. Let's just select this thing and uh, copy this and then jump back over to code and we'll just swap this out. Just a different color blue. Um, there we go. And then our application will update and we'll have this nice uh, blue action bar. There we go, lovely. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna change this text color because I feel like black on blue doesn't look that great, so let's do that. It, that's really easy, we just say color and then white, and then that will change the text for the action bar. Now, it's important to note that while that changes the action bar text, it doesn't change what we call the status bar text. Uh, hopefully this is coming in a later release of Native Script, but you can't change this right now from uh, styles inside of native script, but you can do it from code. So let's go ahead and look at that because it's important to see how you can do anything in native script, even if the framework doesn't directly support an abstraction for it right off the bat. So let's jump over to the TypeScript file here. And don't worry about all this code. I'll put all this stuff up in GitHub and link that as well. So you wanna see how this app is built. And then what we're gonna do here is in this page loaded event, we're gonna programmatically tell iOS to set the style, style of that status bar. So what we'll do is we'll say um, if page.ios, okay, then what we need to do is get a reference to the uh, view controller that is used for this nav bar. So um, I'm just gonna type it out and talk as I go here. We'll say let controller equal frame, you can see I'm using the frame module, I've imported it up top, dot topmost, uh, dot iOS, dot controller. Okay, this gives me the view controller for iOS. I am now calling iOS APIs directly. And then from that, I need to get the navigation bar. So that is controller.navigation bar. And then after that, I need to set the uh, status bar. Now it's set to an enumeration. Uh, you'd have to look through the iOS docs to know this, or you could just Google it. You could say customize status bar native, uh, sorry, you can't see this. Let me pull this down here. Let's do customize status bar native script. And when we do that, you'll see there is a uh, nice blog post here written by <coughs> yours truly. And uh, if we scroll down here, you can come all the way down to where you see where I am setting the text here. So right here, you can see I just set the color and then I set the title text color. And then if we keep on going down, you can see right there the text is white. So let's scroll back up a little bit and see how I change that. It's this navigation bar style. So these are all the different styles you can use here. Let's just copy this one in right here and this will change the text uh, to white. So we'll do that. So let's copy this in, paste it. Now this is iOS only. Uh, so this, this code will only execute on iOS, obviously because Android doesn't have the concept of view controllers. 
All right, so let's save this. And when we do that, uh, our application will, uh, well, will go down and then it will come back up and we should have a white status bar and a white action bar. And we do, really nice. Okay, cool, so we've customized the, uh, the action bar and status bar. Let's keep on going. Uh, the next thing that I wanna do is I want to sort of uh, fix this text here because this is all the same size. This is actually the title and then this is detail text, but you can't really tell because uh, there's no font styling. So let's add some of that. This will be really easy and fun. All right, so let's jump over to the CSS file. For basically, I wanna create an H2 style and then I'm gonna create like a paragraph style. So I'm basically saying that this right here is an H2 and all this is paragraph text. And I'm just using sort of familiar constructs because I'm a web developer, so that makes sense to me. Um, so let me, let's, let's grab these. So for the H2, um, let me just, I'm gonna go ahead and copy in some styles. Awesome. And now let's just add those to the XML. So we'll just come over here and we'll say that this thing, this label, which is a name, has a class of, it used to be beer name, that's from the tutorial. Let's pull that out, H2. And then this one has a class of uh, P. So there we go, we'll make that change and then you'll see how much better this looks already. Let me just jump over here, uh, wait for it to refresh. And now it's starting to look a lot better, right? It's a lot more readable. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add some padding around these table cells because this is all crammed together and it looks real bad. So let's do that. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to say, um, I'm gonna give this thing a class and say, uh, this is an item, right? So this stack layout holds every item in uh, the collection of beers. So each beer is considered an item. And let's go create a style for that item here. Again, I'm gonna copy this in. There we go. And basically I'm just saying, uh, giving it some padding here. And I'm saying that the height is 100. I'm giving it a fixed height so that uh, all of the table view cells are the same height. Let's jump back over and have a look now. Uh, oops. And now we've got some nice uh, spacing here and everything's starting to look pretty good. Um, now let's talk about some other things that are going on here. Um, there's something in iOS that, that uh, really uh, irritates me and that is this selection right here. Now again, with the way that the list view is set up right now, there's no way in the XML to turn this off but I'm gonna show you how to do it in native script anyway because we have access to all the native APIs. So let's go back over here and let's go back to our code here. Uh, actually, let's go to the list view and we're gonna add an event on the list view and the list view is gonna be item loaded. So on the item loaded event, we're gonna do an item loaded event in our code and we're gonna handle that. So let's do that, jump back over and then I'm gonna copy some code up here. But we're gonna set let uh, item loaded equal function, uh, sorry. And all of this should look relatively familiar if you've uh, watched some of the other videos here. I'm gonna copy some code in here real quick. Here we go, let me uh, uncomment this. All right, so, uh, and first of all, this is, it's item loading, not item loaded. So that's important, we'll change that in the XML too. Uh, here, I'm basically getting the uh, current cell and I'm saying, I wanna turn off the selection. Uh, and this is all from the uh, uh, iOS docs. You'd find all this in there where I'm setting the UI table view cell selection to none. So we go ahead and save this. Let's go back to the XML and fix uh, that event name. It's not item loaded, it's item loading. There we go. Oops, we need to change here. And now we go, there we go. Got it right. Uh, so let's go back and check out the application now. And the last thing we need to do is we need to export this thing out so that it's available from uh, to the XML here as the event. Otherwise, we won't be able to see it. So let's take a look at that and uh, here we go refresh here in a minute and all right here's our application and we can move it up and down and when I click on these things it doesn't highlight which is really really nice now let's adjust uh, this a little bit more I'm gonna move this image over to the left and I want to move this text over to the left as well so we'll jump in here go to app.css uh, let's just say for this we'll say uh, it's an item thumbnail and you can see here in the application, the reason why this thing is over so far is because first of all, there's an indentation here and iOS has a, uh, an indent, but then also this image, there's a lot of white space on the left and right. Obviously we would wanna cut these down if we could, but since we can't, we can actually give these things negative margins to move them over. So I can say margin left um, is minus 10. And these are always pixels, so you don't have to say pixels. Uh, and then let's go to the XML and add that uh, style into the image thumbnail. So we just do that here. We'll just say class equals uh, item thumbnail, I believe we called it. 
perfectly perfect. Give it a second to catch up with us here. And this thing should bump over to the left just a tad, and it did. And we can move this thing over a little bit more, actually. So let's do that. And actually, I'm gonna move, um, see if I can collapse this. The screen is so small. There we go. So we can do uh, minus 20 instead and move it over a little bit more. So that's over pretty good. Now let's move this text over as well. Um, and we can do that by uh, giving it a negative margin to the left as well. So we'll just say that that's uh, the item detail. And maybe we want to uh, move that, say, uh, minus 10 pixels to the left. We'll give it a negative margin of minus 10. And then maybe we want a margin on the right of 20 to make it spaced a little bit more evenly on the left and the right. And then we'll jump over and add that to our XML. Uh, and this is really, really tight here. Let me see if I can find the item. It's the stack. Oh, I can't. I can't even. It's hard to look at. OK, so here, uh, this is our item. And this is our item detail. So class equals item detail. There we go. We'll jump back over here. And we'll sort of watch this thing refresh in real time and see what it looks like with that new style applied. And there we go. And now we have a really nice style uh, for our iOS app that doesn't look so so native-y. Native is great. Per native performance is great, but we don't actually want it to look native. We want it to look awesome, and this looks really nice. So there you go. That's some styling guidance for native script apps. I hope that was helpful. Enjoy.